Hi everyone, I'm David Aragona, and this is the September 15th edition of Horses to Watch, where we carefully analyze some trips, looking for horses that might have encountered adversity in their prior starts and could be worth betting back in the future. Now, it was off last week, so we didn't record a video wrapping up closing week at Saratoga, so we're going to go back two weeks and wrap up the Saratoga meet by looking at that final six-day week of Saratoga. Didn't want to let it go because there were some interesting trips from that week that I want to discuss, and I've got four of them to talk about on the show. We're going to go all the way back to Wednesday, the first day of that final week at Saratoga, September 1st, and look at the final race of the day, race 10. This is a New York Red Maiden special week going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Let's break them from the gate. And I want to focus on the horse that's breaking from the far outside, the number 12, Lady Thornhill. And you can see that white face with the blinkers and hood. She breaks a little bit to the outside, veers out about two or three paths coming out of the starting gate, which horses breaking from the outside post do tend to do at times. And that's especially detrimental to her chances, given the quick run into the clubhouse turn that you see going this mile and a 16th distance, and her rider, Jose Ortiz, just never has any opportunity to save ground to get her over towards the inside because the field is pretty bunched up towards the middle of the pack, and he wasn't able to make the front end as he, she had in her prior start. She is a horse that on paper you figured would want to be on the lead in this race, but given the fact that she broke to the right coming out of the starting gate, she wasn't able to show that typical early speed of hers, so she just got hung out four wide all the way around the far turn. And as this race unfolds, you're going to see the problem does not get any better as they proceed down the backstretch onto the second turn. I think Jose Ortiz is trying to make the best out of a bad situation here. He's not uh, launching her into a premature move to take over and try to save ground on the second turn, expending unnecessary energy on the backstretch. He's trying to get her to settle in mid-pack. She's a horse that had not been accustomed to racing this way in the past. Uh, so he's doing all the right things, giving her a lesson. But as you can see here as they start to move around the far turn she still is racing in the four to five path there she is in that red cap now ranging up to challenge the leaders but as they come to the top of the stretch here you're going to see just how wide she is and by the time they get to the top of the stretch now he's finally able to angle over a little bit in the three path but he already lost all of that ground and she does make a pretty good run here to briefly take the lead at about mid stretch but she's just expended so much energy covering more ground than the horses that were able to save ground racing around the turns, one of which was the eventual winner of this race, the number three rating candy, who you see is going to pass Lady Thornhill right in the final 16th of a mile here. And I like to look at the track as data in these situations, and Lady Thornhill actually covered 62 more feet of ground compared to the winner rating candy, and that's pretty significant in any race. Uh, 62 feet equates to about, I think, seven lengths if you do the math. Uh, now, I'm not saying that in all of these situations where horses lose ground, Lady Thornhill would have won this race by six or seven lengths often it doesn't work that way but i think it just quantifies how badly she was affected by losing ground on the turn so she definitely is one that i think can do much better at this level next time potentially break through and break her maiden Let's move on to a race uh, from Thursday's card of that final week at Saratoga. September 2nd, race six, another maiden race, this one for the New York Breds, but the two-year-olds going five and a half furlongs on the dirt. And we're going to focus on two horses in this race, the number one, the Institute, and the number three, Money Merger, both of whom are first-time starters. Let's break these horses from the gate on the backstretch, and you're going to see that the number one, the Institute, actually breaks pretty well on the lead, and he briefly is going to secure the front end in this race, whereas the number three, Money Merger, merger breaks about a step slowly is towards the back of the pack and i want to watch what happens to both of these horses as they move down the backstretch the institute has the lead but as they come out of the bushes here you're going to see his rider jose ortiz take a really strong hold of him and it's a curious decision to make when you have a first time starter that has secured the front end to suddenly wrangle him off the pace and put him in a situation where he's got to deal with a lot of kickback and basically show more professionalism than he would have had to do if he was in the clear on the front end. Whereas the number three money merger is getting a completely different kind of trip. He broke slowly and you can see all around the right of your screen, he's been shuffled back to last and is kind of stuck behind two horses in front of him, really nowhere to go. He's towards the back of the pack here. And surprisingly, Money Merger is going to get up to finish third in this race. So watch the stretch run that he puts in. But I also want to pay attention to the Institute who we're highlighting here. Uh, he had to briefly wait in traffic at the top of the stretch after having to rate in behind those horses once Jose ripped him off the pace. And he finishes up decently to finish second in this race. But the horse that's really running on best of all at the end is Money Merger, who just in the blink of an eye 
goes from last at the top of the stretch to finish third in this race. And on the gallop out, he's going to pass those top two finishers and gallop out really well. So Money Merger was a horse debuting for Barkley Tag, who doesn't always have his first time starters cranked up to win their debuts, who I just think ran a lot better than it seems, given the fact that he basically lost all chance at the start. Whereas the Institute, I think, was primed to win this race. And I just think that his rider got a little bit too caught up in the idea of giving him an education first time out and probably cost him a chance at winning. We'll see which one of these takes a step forward next time out. Uh, Horatio De Paz, the trainer of the Institute, does have a very high percentage winning first time out. So I'm not sure how much we can expect him to improve next time out, though. Clearly, he does have more gate speed than the running line will say when he runs back. And Money Merger, a horse that I think could show more speed next time, but he'll have to break cleanly and get over that poor gate habit that he showed in his debut. Let's move on to a race uh, from Monday's closing day card at Saratoga. Actually, the final two replays we're going to talk about on this show are both from that closing day Monday card, September 6th. This is another maiden race for the two-year-olds. This one for the open runners, though, uh, going six furlongs on the dirt. Let's break them from the gate. We're going to focus on the number two, Command Performance, a first-time starter for Todd Pletcher. And you can see he's actually breaking from the rail with the number one not participating in this race. And he breaks about a half step slowly and just gets a little bit shuffled back, kind of hopping up at the start, finds himself towards the back of the pack. And, you know, I didn't quite talk about it from the Thursday card because it became more pronounced later in the week. But I think by the time we got to the final weekend at Saratoga, it was difficult to make up ground throughout the entire meet, but it became really pronounced on the final weekend. You just were not seeing horses rallying from off the pace on the dirt, and you saw a lot of gate-to-wire winners, horses that were finishing up the race clean without a lot of kickback on them. And I think that makes it a real testament to command performance's ability that he's able to run the kind of race that he does here and finish second. And you see he's in about the middle of the pack right now, that gray horse moving up in the dark green silks. And he's kind of in behind a wall of horses here at the top of the stretch and most two-year-olds in this situation making their debuts after they've broken slowly have to deal with a lot of kickback or altering course multiple points in a race they don't finish up in the stretch they kind of just throw in the towel spit the bit and will back up at this point and it really looks like command performance is going to do that but once irad ortiz gets him to the outside in the clear he starts running again and actually takes a good late shot at the leader, Don't Wait Up, who is going to win this race. Now, the winner already had experience under his belt. He was the favored second-time starter in this race, but I thought Command Performance just put in a really game effort to overcome that poor start, a little bit of traffic trouble, race through the kickback, and to finish up best of all at the end of this race. This is a horse by Union Rags, who had been training really well coming into his debut, and I think he's one for Todd Pletcher that has a lot of talent, and we're going to see him probably break his maiden neck time out and I do think this is the kind of horse that could eventually catapult into stakes races because he just showed so much ability even though he lost his first race he's one that I think does have stakes potential down the line let's finish things up with one more race from that closing day card at Saratoga September 6th this is race 11 the penultimate race of the Saratoga meet a allowance race for the open runners nominers of one other than going a mile on the turf let's break these horses from the gate we're going to focus on the horse breaking all the way from the left side of the screen the number 12 click attack coming out of that outside post position and kind of like lady thornhill in the first replay that i showed uh, click attack is going to lose all sorts of ground on the turns of this race and really just have no chance but you know he does have an opportunity to get over right here and i think his rider eric cancel just never really was aware of where he was on the racetrack or made a concerted effort to get this horse over toward the inside because he just kind of surrenders himself to this five wide trip around the course. And uh, that's never going to be successful on the turf at Saratoga, but especially not on days when the rails are set at zero feet. And you've got that coveted position down on the hedge that horses that are successful in these races typically try to ride. And notice the difference in trips that between click attack, the number 12 and the number three, a tone who's going to be the eventual winner of this race. A tones rider, Louis Saez is on the rail right now in those turquoise and, tur turquoise and yellow silks towards the middle of the pack about right alongside from a positional standpoint click attack except a tones on the rail saving ground around both turns whereas click attack now is making this premature move going four to five wide around the second turn after already having gone four wide around the first turn that is just not a trip that you're going to achieve success with and you can see it coming to the top of the stretch here there's click attack and those yellow silks all the way out in the five path coming into the lane i mean you lose momentum especially on the inner turf course at saratoga when you try to come off the turn that wide because the horses to the inside have the opportunity to 
cut the corner and you can see Atome was able to seamlessly move off the inside and get that clear run through the stretch. That's why Luis Saez was the leading rider at Saratoga, giving multiple horses this kind of trip. But uh, click attack, just nothing went right for him in this race going wide throughout. I think you check in about sixth across the wire. He is a horse for Jimmy Jerkins, who is in much better form than the result in this race would indicate. He was actually coming off another wide trip in the middle of the meet when they'd also taken the rails down on the turf course. So he is now a little bit dirtied up. Two races at this nominers of one of them open level. I think he didn't get ideal trips either time. And getting back to Belmont Park, where he's likely to start next, I think that's going to be the kind of turf course that's much more friendly to the style of click attack because he's not necessarily the kind of horse that wants to be covered up. He probably does want to make that unencumbered run into the race. He's kind of a grinder type, and you're able to do that without losing too much ground at Belmont. So look for click attack to do much better at this level when he resur resurfaces at Belmont next time out. So those are all the horses to watch for this week. It wraps up the Saratoga meet. A little bit late doing it, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk about some of these races as we covered Saratoga for all eight weeks uh, on this show. And I hope you know, gave out some good ideas on horses to bet back when the Belmont meet begins later this week. And if you want to follow these horses in the future, you can add them to your watch list uh, at horsewatch on DRF.com. Just add them to a list. You'll get email notifications when these horses are entered back in the future. Thanks for tuning in this week and make sure to catch future episodes of Horses to watch on upcoming Wednesdays.